What's up everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today we are going to have a very, very hard time. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about the five fountain pens that I would buy if I had to start my entire collection over again. And to take it to the next level, not only am I getting rid of every single fountain pen I own and starting from scratch, absolutely zero, uh, these five are the only pens that I can ever buy. So this is it. These are my five. They're not necessarily my favorite. Just like if you watched my five inks with the same concept that I posted yesterday. Uh, they're not necessarily my favorite, but they are what would fit my life if I could only ever have five. So the caveat to this video, the little asterisk, just like the ink one, is that I have to already have them. <laughs> Um, so that I know I like them, essentially. Like, I can't just say, oh, I want the, you know, $30,000 a Mont Blanc one so that I could sell it down the road if I needed cash. No. Uh, I mean, you could if you want to take that this way, but I chose to not do that. I chose to have only five for the rest of my life. And one of them, I think, is really, really, really going to surprise you guys. And I'm going to leave it till the last one. Of course. Because I want you guys to keep watching. Uh, but comment down below if you can guess which one I think you will be surprised to see on this top five. But starting in no particular order, with the exception of obviously the last one I'm purposely leaving to last, uh, I would choose the Banu Euphoria. Uh, I have many of these now, but specifically in bourbon, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, it's the first Benio I ever had that made me fall in love with this brand. Um, it just is absolutely stunning. Um, I love the color, which is why I specifically said this one as well. Um, I love the color. I love the deep, rich browns and reds. I love the sparkle. I love the silver trim. Uh, number six size nib. Um, I love the way that like the hexagon feels. Uh, the way that this pen writes is unlike no other. And it's just beautiful. And it would be perfect for any of the warm tone inks that I have, uh, which is a fair amount, <laughs> let's be honest. Um, and I just think it's dynamite. Uh, it's large without being heavy. It's flashy, so it does fit the, the sparkly needs that I have from time to time. Um, and it is hands down one of the best writers that I've ever had. So that is why I chose the Bennu Euphoria. What else did I choose? Hmm. <sighs> Tea break. I chose, of course, you all probably have guessed this, the Pilot Custom 912. I debated really long and hard, really long, like, Oh my god, guys, agonizing. Isaac, agonizingly long. If I can't even speak English, that's how long I debated over this. Because I only wanted one pilot in this list. And I prefer the custom uh, 823, the vacuum filling version with the amber resin. I prefer that over the 912. But, but, this pen with the falcon nib and the ebonite feed Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, you guys. It writes so, so crazily well. It's super wet. It'll, f it'll uh, fill the, the void for any flexiness that I may or may not want. Um, I love the way that this responds while you're writing. Um, it's just dynamite. Uh, it's a classic looking pen, so you can take it anywhere and it's not going to have any issues that way. Uh, the Con 70 converter is a little bit of a pain in the dill hole to clean, but if I only ever have five pens, then chances are those five pens are going to be inked up, well, always. Um, and I would just kind of like flush it out, put the same color back in. Um, so that's primarily why I chose this over the 823 is that it's a classic look, so I can put any ink in there that I desire, uh, and it'll fix, or fix, fill that uh, potential flexi void that I'm going to want from time to time. Uh, but I don't want necessarily a pen that is only 
really meant for a flex writing. This is the jack of all trades. It can do whatever your heart desires. Uh, and then another one that I chose to be in my can only have five for the rest of time. Of course, I have to have a Quebeco Sport. I have to. I have to. Um, this one specifically is the Frosted Coconut. Uh, it is my favorite of all the Quebecos that I own. Um, I really like this one because A, it's tuned to my perfection, super wet, super smooth. Um, I love the way that they just like, they feel. I like that it's a pocket pen. It's the only pocket pen that I have in this top five. Not, I keep saying top five. I just mean my remaining five. Um, so I want to have a pocket pen and this one fills that void. Again, silver trim because it is my preference. Um, this one has the converter in it that you can see that little push one it holds less than like the cartridges would but this way I could use bottled ink with it without having to have a syringe to like fill it up every time um, fits really nicely in my hand when capped it's the only or when posted it's the only pen I actually use posted uh, and there's just something about this pen that well I just dropped it <laughs> and I hit the camera and there's just something about this pen that makes me feel warm and fuzzy uh, and I absolutely adore that and I just, I need, a, I need a warm and fuzzy pen in my only five ever fountain pens. And then I chose to go uh, with something that's a little bit different than any other pen that I have. And it's definitely the most expensive pen out of all of them. And I chose this for two reasons. One, because it's gorgeous. I mean, look at it. This is the Visconti Homo Sapiens Sun, uh, Arizona Sunset finish and I chose this again it's gorgeous but also because Emmy from Pen Venture tuned this for me and it writes precisely the way that I want it to very smooth very wet it's an extra fine nib uh, and it just glides like like a skate on ice <laughs> across the paper it's beautiful it holds a ton a ton a ton a ton a ton of ink um it's at the heaviest one that i have here um so sometimes i do want that heft uh, and i just love to fidget and play with the hook safe lock it's just so much so much fun um and i debated over this one because i'm like what ah, i mean what i want to like you know have this for the rest of my life be the only thing yeah yeah i would yeah if it fits the niche this way i've got you know a couple cartridge converters uh and i've got the vacuum fill and then the final pen the one that's going to surprise you guys i think is a piston filler so now i've got all my main um converter uh, like filling mechanisms covered <sighs> i debated over this one i did i really did but I went with it because this one in particular is a good one. Can you hear it? Can you make any guesses? It's from a brand I don't particularly care for. The Twisby Diamond 580 ALR. Um, so I decided to go with the Twisby and I did that for a couple of reasons. One, this pen, this specific pen in particular writes really well. Most of my beef with Twisby is that most of the nibs that I've used out of the box don't write the way that I think they should. That said, <laughs> asterisks to that, most people are, are perfectly fine with it. They're just not my cup of tea. This one actually does. Uh, it is a fine nib, it writes very smoothly with little feedback, and it's very wet. And that is what I want, and that is not what most Twisbees give me. <laughs> the nib is stiff as a nail, but none of the rest are, really. Like, most of the rest have some sort of give, some sort of uh, spark to it. The, the Caveco, not really. The Caveco's stiff, but this one just seems to be like the stiffest of all the stiffs. <laughs> Um, and because of that, I, I don't really usually like the way that Twisby writes, but this one breaks the mold. Uh, and I adore the way that Twisby is built. I think their build quality is dynamite. And that's 
partially the reason why I also went with this because I think it'll last a lifetime. Uh, the piston holds a good amount of ink. It's the only pen that I have that is a proper demonstrator. Um, and I could really put this pen through its paces and I think it'll hold up just fine and dandy. Um, and for the most part, the reason why I chose all of these with really the exception of the Visconti is that they're all relatively easy to clean out. Um, and I, cause I, I hate pens that, you know, you can't disassemble pretty much. Uh, and Twisby is definitely one that you can fully disassemble. It comes with a wrench. It comes with your silicone grease. It wants you to do it. So you might as well. <laughs> um, and that's what I went for. Um, so I thought long and hard about it while I would prefer the, um, just AL, just the aluminum version, not the ALR, um, just for the grip section, because it's kind of like gnarled. The grip section is the same. It doesn't bother me while writing. It just holds on to ink when you like dip it into the bottle and fill it up. And that kind of annoys me. Um, so I prefer the non R version for that reason. But other than that, I think it's perfect. So those are the five pens that I would really go for. Uh, they're not necessarily my favorite, uh, like the Twisby, for example, not necessarily my favorite. Um, I don't have it inked up that often, but I think if I could only have five pens for the rest of my life and get rid of every single other pen I would have, I think it should belong. It fills a purpose. It fills a void. And this would be my life. <laughs> So let me know in the comments section down below what your five forever pens would be um, and see, do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? I, I don't know, let me know. <laughs> um, but if you're down there anyways, you might as well hit that like button, the subscribe button, check out the description if you wanna see my Patreon account to help support me and what I do here. And as always, as always, I'm gonna see you next time, bye. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. Just kidding. That's the beginning. <laughs> it is time for our Patreon crew shout out. Uh, this was filmed as of December 1st. So if you don't see your name, don't fret. I will update it as soon as I possibly can. My two ultimate humans, Daniel Rodney and Comp Dave, and all my VIPs, Susan, McCall Bennett Lawrence, Karen Epstein, Gretchen Peters, Carol Lowry, Michael Simon, Subiwan Kenobi, Catherine Molina, Waylay Chang, Brian Law, Bill Pemberton, Lucas Bell, Robert Myers, Marissa Calvo, Eric Lineman, Stephen Baldwin, DigitalTent.Tech, Bobby A. Bailey, Bass, Joan Worthman, Luna Wolf Games, Aaron C., and Glenn Kelly. You guys make it super, super, super possible for me to keep making these videos. No matter what tier you're in, I thank you for supporting me on Patreon, especially those of you who've been with me since the beginning. You mean more to me than you could possibly ever know. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!